how to serve local GPT to create powerful application using local GPT API. That's what we are going to be exploring in this video. The idea is very simple. Just like you can build applications using chat GPT API, we can replace chat GPT API with local GPT API. That way you are not sharing your information or your data with anyone. In this case, you're going to be putting your local GPT instance somewhere in the cloud on a powerful machine and then making API calls to it in order to build applications on top of it. So that way your client does not really need to have a powerful GPU in order to run applications. And you can also scale it to multiple computers or machines. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through a step-by-step -step process of how the local GPT API is, is implemented. And then I'm going to show you example application that is built on top of the local GPT API. For those of you who are not familiar, local GPT is my own project that lets you chat with your documents locally using the power of open source large language models. Now, thanks to the amazing contributors, we have already passed 14,000 stars and the project has been featured on trending GitHub repos a couple of times. Local GPT API was developed by Jim, who is an amazing developer. Do check out his projects. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the local GPT API on your system. And then we will run uh, an example application that's built on top of it. Now, if you are new to the local GPT project, I would actually recommend you to watch this video to get a better understanding of how the underlying code works. So we will start off by cloning the repo. So for that, you need to go click on this green button, then copy the link to the repo. Now I have already cloned this repo but I'm going to simply walk you through the process of how to do this again. So you need to have git installed on your computer. Now, in order to clone the repo, you need to use the git clone command, then provide the link to the repo. And then you can optionally provide the name of the folder where you want to store the cloned repo. I have already done this, so I'm not going to do this again. Once you're done with this, next we need to create a virtual environment. So again, we're going to use conda create and then dash n, then the name of the virtual environment. So I'm going to call this local GPT underscore API, and then the Python version that you want to use. So I like to use Python 3.10.0. I have already created this virtual environment. So it simply tells me that do I want to uh, remove the existing environment? So I'm going to say no, right? But once you create the virtual environment, then you need to activate it. So we're going to use conda activate and then the name of the virtual environment that we just created so and you see that we are now within this new virtual environment after that you need to install all the required packages and for that you can use the pip install dash r requirement.txt file and that will install all the required packages i have already done so so i'm not going to do this again so we are all set for running the api as well as the gui but in order to run this, I'm going to be going back and referring to the GitHub tutorial. So in this case, we're going to be looking at this section, run the UI. Now, before that, I want to highlight a couple of changes that has been made. Now, the model definition has been moved to constant.py. Now, if you're not familiar uh, with local GPT project and you're not sure what I'm talking about, I would recommend to check out the earlier videos. But for this video, you don't really need to know all of that. Uh, the only thing is that the more the LLM that you are going to be using has to be defined within the constant.py file, right? So here I'm using the Llama 27B chat model, the GGML format. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, I would actually recommend you to use the GPTQ format for quantized model rather than GGML. There are some issues that uh, we need to figure out and fix, uh, but that would be my recommendation for NVIDIA users. I just want to reiterate that this project is under active development, so things will change. Now, let me show you how to run the API, and then I'll walk you through the code. In order to run the API, you need to be in the root folder of the local GPT project, and then you need to simply type python run underscore local GPT and then we are going to use the API file and this will uh, start running the API. Now this will take a little bit of time but then it will load and you will see something like this. So it's actually running on uh, this specific uh, address which is the local host address with 
uh, port 5110 after that i'm going to open another terminal so here i need to again activate the virtual environment and that was local gpt underscore api now in this case we need to actually move to the second folder so this is local gpt api i'm going to type in let me just do this okay i'll type in cd and then local gpt ui folder right and within this folder if you see there is one uh, python file and then some other folders and this is the python file that we need to run this is basically a ui for local gpt that is using the local gpt api i'm going to walk you through the code in a little bit but just want to show you a quick demo of what is going on oh okay i'm actually already running this in another terminal so i'm gonna go and close that and let's go back and run this again so once you run this you're going to see this message which again it's running on my local machine but now the port number is different than where the api is running now we simply need to copy this link and go back to our browser so simply put this in your browser and it will show you this user interface now the goal of this ui is to show you how you can use the local gpt api to build your own applications uh, so we put together a very a simple interface but you can uh, add a lot more to it if you want now there is a pretty nice and detailed tutorial on how to use this application uh, so you can basically download the constitution.pdf file or there are some news articles that jim has put together so if you click on this this will also download some news articles for you that you can use now in terms of the basic functionality this is what you're going to do so you can simply click on the upload button and select the file that you want to upload so for example for the first document we are going to be simply uploading the constitution.pdf file i'm going to just upload that now you can simply cl click on add that will add your document to the uh, knowledge base now there is a small issue right now which uh, we, we need to fix but uh, every time you add a new document it will simply recreate the whole knowledge base you can also reset it so that will delete the existing knowledge base or you can cancel it so in this case i'm going to just add it and then it will start the ingestion process and you can actually see uh, the ingestion process on the visual code studio so right now it says the directory does not exist so it will create a persistent uh, directory where it's going to put the vector store so you can see that it says that uh, it will put the vector db in the db folder right so it's going to go through this process uh, i'm going to walk you through the code in a little bit so once that is done you can start asking questions for example i said what is this document about click on search and it will start uh, querying the data and here is the response that we got so here is our query then the response which says that the, this document appears to be the constitution or chapter of some sort possibly for a country or organization right now these are different chunks that the mo model used during retrieval of information okay let me also show you what exactly happened under the hood so here is the prompt uh, that is coming from the application and then the application made calls to the api so if you see here this was the initial api call where it simply saved the document so it created uh, a new document and stored it in the source documents folder then it ran the ingestion part of the api right and then uh, based on the provided prompt and actually uh, made another api call uh, to retrieve the information uh, from our document now you can also add more documents to it so let's go back to the ui and click on upload again so in this case i have some example news articles i'm gonna simply select all of them and then click open and uh, click on add so this will be added to my uh, vector database or vector store so the document ingestion process is completed so one of the article is about uh, apple airport max so let's see if there is some information that we can retrieve all right so let's ask it simple uh, the price of airports okay so let's ask about the price of airports max based on the document that we provided all right so it came up with the answer the price of airport max is 450 dollars at amazon and best buy and i think this is where uh it's grabbing the information from right 
So here are a couple of other sources which talks about AirPod Max. And then for some reason, it also uh, put a section from constitution.pdf. Now, the reason of this is we are asking it to return four different chunks, right? So you probably want to play around with different parameters. Uh, but the goal was to show you uh, that you can integrate local GPT API within your own applications. Now, the second part of this video is going to be more of a code walkthrough. So that is for people who are uh, more interested in understanding the actual code. Okay, before looking at the code, a couple of things to highlight. When you upload files, they're going to be stored within this source documents folder. Uh, and then here's the uh, vector DB that it's creating. Now, if you don't want to run uh, a UI through an API, there's also a standalone uh, UI that I'm experimenting with, and I'll cover this in another video. Okay, so let's start looking at the code. I just want to say this, this code can definitely be improved. And I'm actually looking for contributors to improve uh, the overall local GPT project. So far, the contributions have been absolutely amazing. And I'm looking forward for the open source community to contribute further to this project. First and foremost, we are importing all the required packages. So everything is based on Flask here. Then we are importing the load model function from the uh, run local GPT file. Uh, and the model uh, is actually defined within the constant.py function, right? Then the usual stuff, the model name, where we're going to uh, store the vector DB and so on and so forth. So by default, it will look for NVIDIA GPU. If it doesn't find an NVIDIA GPU on your local machine, then it's going to start using the CPU. Now, one thing you will notice here is that we are actually uh, deleting the existing vector DB. So if this is something you don't want, you can simply comment out the section. And after that, I am running uh, the ingest.py within this file. Okay, so this will become evident when we go down um, the code. All right, so creating a vector DB, then creating a retriever based on the vector DB, loading the model or LLM that we want to use, right? And here's the retrieval QA chain. Okay, so the rest of the functions basically controls the behavior of what happens. So if we get a response uh, for deleting the source, then it will delete the source documents. And this is basically uh, when you go uh, to the local GPT UI that I showed you. And here uh, you simply uh, select a file and then you say reset, right? So if you click reset, it will delete everything. And that basically makes a call uh, to this specific function within the API. Now, the second function is for saving the documents when you upload them. Uh, then the last one is basically the uh, ingestion process. Now, this will simply run the whole ingestion process for you. Uh, and the last function is used for taking care of user input or user prompt. Okay, let's go to the UI code. So uh, here we have the home page function. And within this, we are looking for the user request. Now, if the user request is a prompt, in that case, we go to the prompt route, get a response, and show that response back to the user. If uh, the user request is uploading documents, so again, uh, we will go through this uh, source documents endpoint, right? Ingest the documents, run the ingestion on top of those, right? And create a vector a DB for that. Now, if the user request is to reset everything, so we will actually go and use the uh, delete source endpoint. So this basically shows you a very simple implementation of a graphical user interface that is using the local GPT API. So ideally, you will be able to build your own applications on top of it. You can serve the API somewhere on the cloud, and then your uh, local UIs or graphical user interfaces can make calls to that API in a similar way uh, in which the chat GPT API works. I hope this video is useful. Uh, let me know what you are building on top of this local GPT API. If you would like to support my work, check out my Patreon. Link is going to be in the description of the video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.